What is the one secret to being rich? Someone asked me that today. And uh, I get asked those type of questions and sometimes I think they're a little bit, uh, I think they go down the wrong path, but a few things just happened to me earlier today and I was like, I got the freaking answer for you. I'm gonna give you the damn answer right here. You wanna know what it is? Now you gotta promise me if I tell you this, that you'll pay attention because I don't wanna throw this out there and people use it incorrectly. It's a powerful tool and here it is. Everything you do should turn to gold. Now you might be like, oops, you might be like, that's obvious. No, no, this isn't obvious what I'm about to say. Anything you ever touch, if you are working at Taco Bell, if you're working at McDonald's, should turn to gold. Here's the three part test. I said, I'm gonna give you one thing. Well, there's three parts to the test. The first one is, Someone gives you a task. I don't care what it is. There was a Lyft driver who, uh, one of my friends was coming over, needed a Lyft. I sent them Lyft, like Uber. This Uber Lyft driver could not find my house, even though I live on one of the main streets that there are, that you know are in Beverly Hills. Couldn't get here, even with all the technology in the world. There's the GPS that they come with their company. There's Google Maps. There's Waze. Couldn't find it, ended up in a back alley. And I was thinking, you know what? There's three kind of Uber drivers or Lyft drivers. Ones who live up to your expectations, that's in the middle. Ones who underperform like this person, just couldn't find us. And then there's the third and the most rare. And that's the driver who you go, damn, that was way better than I thought. That was a little better or way better than I thought. If people start saying that about you, mark my words, you will be rich. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about it in life. Everything you want will begin to come to you. That's a bold statement. My, my lawyers don't like me saying statements like this because, you know, people might take it the wrong way. But I'm telling you, if everything you touch at work, socially, Anecdotally, <laughs> anecdotally, I should say, you know, little side things that people are gonna tell a little story about you. I bumped into this person, you. And if they say, that person was a little better than I thought they'd be. If every date you go on, the person walks away going, that was a more interesting person than I met. If you're an Uber driver, if everybody that sits in your car goes, damn, this person should be doing something. They're so skilled, they should, shouldn't be driving an Uber or a lift, not that there's anything wrong with driving, I'm just saying, you always want your life to be increasing. It's nothing, no shame in being an Uber driver, Lyft driver, working at McDonald's, but you don't wanna do it forever. That's not how that game of life goes. You walk through the ranks and you increase. And the only way to increase, you know, you can go to college, and I'm not anti-college, I'm not pro-college. You can get a $100,000 graduation cap and a piece of paper. That ain't gonna make you rich. It'll give you some debt. Maybe it'll make you look better on a job interview. And for some things, you need to get a college degree if you're gonna be a medical doctor, accountant, stuff like that. But mark my words, if somebody says about you, in every station of life you ever occupy, you might be watching this at the bottom. You know, that's what I would say. The thing about us, me and you, I've been at the bottom. I'm no rich kid's son. Uh, there was no trust fund for me. I was born to a single mom. My trust fund, my dad was in prison. Uh, the opposite of a, of a trust fund. That's the thing about us, me and you. We know what's up in life because we didn't grow up with a silver spoon in our mouth. We had to learn things the hard way. And I'm passing one on to you that you get this one down. It not only will change your life, it will change your health, your wealth, your love, happiness, all four of the pillars of the good life. Everything you touch turns to gold. And you know what? Suddenly things will start to change in your life. When I was 19, my first uh, company I ever started with my uh, mentor, Joel Salatin, he never told me till years later. In fact, he was just here and left me a note, handwritten note. He said, I want you to know, Ty, at 19 when you were gathering eggs, he had 10,000 chickens I had to take care of on his farm. And, in Swope, Virginia. He said, you know, you did a little better than I thought. 
And when I did a little better than I thought, it gave me a little more responsibility and a little more and a little more and a little more. I had some ideas, some ideas he's still using on the farm now. I went to the next thing. And I'm not saying I'm always doing things right. You're going to make mistakes. It's the general vibe that you give off. People need to be impressed. People say, hey, Ty, how do you network with millionaires? Oh, I can give you the answer. Because <laughs> I've done it the right way and I've done it the wrong way. The wrong way is where people get a bad taste in their mouth. Like, who is this fool, Ty? And I've done it the right way. You know, I, I post a little video. I think I posted it where I was at a out of the AFI Awards with Steven Spielberg. And we were talking and I said, ah, let me shoot a little, little pic, some few selfies and some video. And he's like, oh, okay. So I started doing it and you know, I do a lot of stuff with selfies. And apparently I impressed him because when I walked away, Steven Spielberg followed me. He said, hey man, can you show me how you do that with the camera? And I'm thinking, this is the king of cameras. This is Steven Spielberg. He's made a billion dollars. <laughs> he's made, E.T., you name all the biggest movies out there. Billion dollars. But yet, you can impress even those people. That's the thing about us. Even when we came from the bottom. I was born in Long Beach. I was born in the ghetto. I wasn't born up here in Beverly Hills. Some of you have never been to Long Beach. Go to North Long Beach. Tell me what you think. When you rise, you rise by leaving your mark in people's brain where they go. That person is a little more impressive. Steven Spielberg thought, I'm just taking a picture and a little video with, with just, you know, anybody. And I, of course, I'm not saying I'm a great person because I know how to take pictures or videos with selfies with uh, Steven Spielberg. But the point is, they pay attention. I talked to Elon Musk recently, three times this year. I've gotten to talk to him, spend some time with him. Fascinating that even Elon Musk He'll pay attention. I tell him, yeah, I read a book a day. He goes, oh, really? Tell me a little bit more. And you have to find your thing because my thing might not be your thing. You might not be reading books. You might be a mechanic. You know, leave a, when you're done, leave some chocolate in their car. They wouldn't be expecting that. A customer comes, you fix up their car, you leave them a little th handwritten thank you note. They'll come back to your auto body shop if you do that because nobody's doing it because what people expect there's three levels they expect you just fix their car and you just give them the keys that's what they're expected going at the status quo it doesn't get you far it'll keep you in business but you won't prosper you won't be rich now god help you if you underperform if every person that brings their car to your auto body shop they go i thought it was going to look nicer it looks worse you're going to be out of business that's straight bankruptcy right there 1% of 1% of this world figures out how to leave a lasting impression on people. That's the thing about us. Nobody told us this stuff. I'm telling you the straight dope. I'm telling you. I've seen it work to bring me out of the worst circumstances. And now, you know, tens of millions, even more people follow my stuff. And I get hundreds, even thousands a day. Uh, uh, now Snapchat, it's thousands a day. Of people going, hey, when I leave that vibe with people, when everything I touch turns to gold, people start paying attention to me. That's what you got to say. That's the new you. This year is the year of the new you. Like I say, it's not the new you. It's the old you that society killed, that our parents forgot to tell us, that our teachers and the public school and the private schools forgot to stick in our curriculum. That's the thing about us. We should have been taught this a long time ago, but now we're gonna self-educate. We're gonna educate by finding the example of other smart people, and we're gonna absorb their knowledge and put it in practice in our life. That's why I said, me and you about the same. I'm sure we got little differences. You might have different color hair. You know, you might not wear glasses, but don't let all this big house and Ferraris and mansions uh, fool you. I still remember us, the place that the regular person came from. And there's nothing wrong with coming from there. In fact, the best people I've ever met came from average or below average circumstances, but they increased. Life is about prosperity. Life is about leaving impression. Life is about serving 
your own interests and also serving the interests of mankind. It's about taking care of your family and taking care of maybe a family you don't know. But at the same time, enjoying a little selfish pleasure sometimes too. Sometimes people say, hey, you got a Lamborghini and Ferrari? I say, well, I give back, but I also give to myself. I gotta motivate myself. If I'm only giving to other people, when will I give to myself? When will I motivate myself to increase so that I can benefit everything that I touch? Have it turn to gold so that other people can benefit from the gold. This is the only way to get rich. You can get any degree you want. And that's fine and dandy. It won't trump this formula. You can perform what people expect. You can do worse. God help you if you do worse than what people expect. If you do status quo, you'll be all right. You'll pay the bills. You'll go on a vacation once a year. But you won't own a vacation house. You won't own the company. You won't delete the alarm clocks from your phone because you wake up when you want to wake up. You won't skip the commute to traffic. You won't skip the nasty boss and the coworker that you wish you could get away from. You won't skip the sweating at night when the first of the month comes and the rent's there, but everything you touch turns to gold. Some people say, hey, Ty, I wanna make a YouTube channel. I'm like, well, go ahead, make one, then send me the link and I'll click on it. And when I click on it, if it's what I expect, you know, a decent YouTube click, I go, okay, that's cool. If it's horrible, you never click again. But if you click on that and you're like, good God, this person don't even know what they're doing and it's already looking good. It turned to gold. It turned to gold. People say, oh man, Ty, how do you do public speaking? How do you get on these videos with no notes and talk? Some people are impressed that I can do that. They didn't expect that. You figure out how to do it. You train. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is train. You can be a better speaker than me. Like I said, the thing about us is we weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouth inheriting a hundred million bucks or 10 million bucks or one million or nothing. Maybe you got more than me, maybe you had less, but once you know the rules, life changes. That's what they forgot to teach us. Nobody told us the damn rules. This is the damn rule. You know, people get tattoos. I'm like, Tate, tattoo this to your body. Everything I touch turns to gold. You're the alchemist, the alchemist of life. Give me an example. Some area in your life where you're underperforming. It ain't turning to gold. Leave that as a comment. Let's see what it is. And then leave me an example of something good, some cool story. You know, the other day I posted a video. I played Chris Paul, the NBA, eight-time NBA All-Star, starting point guard for the Clippers. And you know, he knew I come from a little bit of a basketball background, but I didn't brag much. We were at a dinner together a few months ago, and so he invited me to come play basketball down at the Clippers. Showed up there. I didn't say much, you know. Then all of a sudden I started shooting, and he was like, damn. He had a hard time beating me. He beat me, of course, but it's H-O-R-S. I was hitting shots behind the backboard, all the threes and all that. He beat me on a half court shot, barely. I almost hit it. But again, it's not that I'm better than Chris Ball. I ain't gonna be better than a pro basketball player. Okay, don't get me wrong, but I'll tell you this. He walked away from that going, this dude's a little better than I thought. That's all you have to do. You don't have to be the richest person in the world. You don't have to read 100 books a week or a month or even a year. But when people talk to you, they gotta go, this, this dude, this woman's, I didn't think they're gonna be that smart. I didn't think, I'll give you an example one time. I used to own nightclubs in North Carolina. Crazy story, I'll never forget. That's where I learned, don't judge people by the outward because sometimes you can look like a dumbass. This dude rolled in. And um, Big Daddy Kane, if you know him, one of the original rappers, he used to come to my clubs. I don't know, he just liked to hang out. He used to have like salsa clubs. I think he liked the Latin women. He brought this dude with him. Big Daddy Kane's big dude, big black guy, you know, tall. He brought this big white guy. The white guy looked like a huge version of Eminem. Just dressed all hip hop out. I don't know if he was from, I think he's literally was from Detroit. <clears throat> I won't say his name, but uh, he's kind of well known, but. He rolls in, 
Big Daddy Kane's a smart guy. We started talking. I'm talking about business. I was working at the time also doing a lot of finance stuff, doing Wall Street stuff. So I thought I knew a lot of stuff about finance, you know. So somehow the conversation came up. This guy was selling some of his businesses. This big white dude that looked like he was from, you know, the projects. All of a sudden he started talking about business. He knew 10 times more than me. He was talking about advanced stock options, investing schedules. And I was going, I remember thinking to myself, who is this dude? He fooled me. I thought he'd be here. But you know what? That conversation, he touched it. And it turned to gold. He elevated it way more than I expected. And I always had respect for that guy. Uh, you know, I, I over time we lived in the same city in Raleigh, North Carolina. People would ask me about him. I'm like, that's a smart dude. His reputation was going forward, working on his behalf through my mouth. Because I was like, hey, this dude fucking knows. I'm impressed. And that's got to be you. That's got to be you. You don't like your job? You could run your job. Because mark my words, I own companies. If somebody steps up the game and everything I hand them, I'll be like, you could be the damn CEO. You'll learn CEO is not the highest level. I ain't the CEO of my company. You want to be the chairman of the board or the president. So you could be the CEO of my company in a year, two years, whatever. Could be making a million bucks a year. If somebody's worth the damn and they walk in, and by the way, this talk that I'm giving you is somewhat along the lines, if you're not in the 67 steps, check it out. 70,000 people went into it last year. And the first principle in the 67 steps is somewhat related to this. It's a little bit different. It's awareness worth a damn factor, but there, these are related topics. Sometimes people write on my YouTube channel are like, you know, I started following you and I thought you were just a materialistic guy who likes Lamborghinis. Now I'm like, you kind of impressed me. You talk about more. They didn't say I'm perfect. They didn't say I'm amazing. They just said, you're better than I thought. Get people saying that about you. Next time you go to a networking event, make sure every person you talk to is like, I didn't expect that out of this person. Do that at your work. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're an employee, do this. You will rise. You will rise. It won't happen always overnight. I can't promise you the time frame. Sometimes fate and mother nature has its own time frame that's a little slower than we want or a little more jagged in its ups and downs. But uh, mother nature ain't fair in the day, but she tends to be fair over a few years. As Charlie Munger says, to get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world's not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. Everything you touch turns to gold. That's the thing about us. People are going to be saying that about us. You and I. They'll be saying, they didn't grow up with Harvard professors as parents. They didn't grow up going to all the rich private schools. They didn't grow up hanging out with millionaires. But you know what? They did it. That's you. That's me. Make it your story. Leave your comments where you're underperforming and where you're going up already. Focus on your strengths and your weaknesses. Don't have to be afraid to highlight either of them. I tell my strengths, I'm not afraid. Some people say, oh, you're bragging. Fuck you. <laughs> I ain't talking to you. All the people that aren't allies of mine, you can leave, my friend. I share my wins because those of you listening who are my allies, I want you to share your wins with me. And I share my failures so that you don't have to fail. You share your failures with me, so I don't have to make it, uh, make that same mistake. And then to everybody that's gonna turn on you when you start to do this, just like, fuck you. <laughs> Adam Carolla told me, keep a carefully loaded fuck you uh, in your holster. Now you don't always have to be that crude, but you can just, you know what sometimes I say, I don't always swear. I'll just be like, I get it dude, go do your thing. <laughs> Give him a hand. Give him a dust off the shoulder. Be like, I, I get it. You want to come in here and you want to uh, kill the vibe here. You want to not let me elevate. Go do it with somebody else. You in the wrong room, bro. Let them go. Share your wins. Don't be afraid, but don't be afraid to show share your weaknesses. And when you do that, the weaknesses begin to disappear and the strengths start to get bigger. And then they will precede you. <laughs> and eventually you don't have to say anything. People will know your name. All right? Leave that comment. 
Check out my snap. I've been showing some of these behind the scenes. Ty Lopez won. I'm still giving that car away. Two cars. You win. Your friend wins. If your friend wins, you win. Pretty badass. Snap is Ty Lopez and the number one.